My name's Aaron Massey from MrFixItDIY.com, and today I'm here to share with you my top 10 ways to keep dust down during a remodel. This video is brought to you by Trimaco, makers of an extensive line of surface and job site protection products since 1906. For a complete list of their products and where you can purchase them, check out their catalog at Trimaco.com. One of the fastest ways to drive yourself or your spouse crazy during a DIY remodel project is to have the dust carry over into the rest of the house. Dust can seemingly travel to the farthest corners of the house, coating furniture, flooring, windows, and electronics. Now I can't sit here and lie to you and tell you that it's possible to keep remodel dust 100% contained, but with a little bit of prep work on the front end and some maintenance throughout the project, it is possible to keep it under control and limited to the areas that you're remodeling. Number one is budget for dust containment. Now this seems like a no brainer, but most people I've talked to about this fail to consider dust containment as part of their estimated remodel cost. And in my opinion, it's one of the biggest mistakes DIYers make. Now we're not talking a ton of money here, but plan to budget around $100 to $200, depending on the size of your project, on the front end to dedicate towards dust containment. If you don't budget for it, you will have spent at least that amount by the end of the project anyway, in time, cleaning products, or cleaning services to clean up after you. Number two, plastic is your best friend. Before I get started on demo for any remodel, I always try to contain the project as much as possible in its own little bubble. I recommend stapling it in place wherever possible for added strength and then sealing the edges with tape. You can use duct tape or a more friendly wall painter's tape depending on if you're keeping the wall or not. I recommend at least a four millimeter to six millimeter plastic because it's thin enough to be manageable but thick enough to withstand the duration of your project without getting destroyed. If you poke a hole in it or tear it during your project, fix it right away. This is the maintenance part I was talking about. Throughout your project, you'll have to continuously check and make sure your enclosure is staying dust proof. Number three is to do your demo strategically. If you're doing a bunch of demo as part of your project or maybe removing a wall to open up a space, focus on the areas away from the rest of the house first before moving towards the separating wall. The longer you can keep a permanent barrier between rooms, the better. Before you take out that final wall, build a temporary plastic wall on the other side using some thick plastic and some dust containment poles or a basic wood frame. This temporary wall will serve as your main protective barrier for the rest of your project. So make sure you're checking it regularly to make sure it's staying dust proof. Number four, utilize your windows. If you're lucky enough to have a window in your project area, they can be really helpful as a place to remove demo materials. In addition to that, they can be used to create a positive pressure room by building a box fan enclosure to have the dust blow outside while you're working. Thick cardboard, scrap plywood, or thick plastic and some tape work great for this. Crack one window open opposite your fan to keep air flowing throughout. Keep in mind that if the windows are open, there's likely to be a breeze blowing in if the fan is not running, so make sure everything else in the room is sealed up tight. And also remember to remove your screens so you don't end up with them caked in dust. Number five is to cover your vents. Not only will dust get in there and get blown around the rest of your house, covering every inch of your belongings, but it'll also clog up your air filters. Seal around all your registers in your work area to make sure it doesn't become an issue. I still recommend replacing your air filter on your system after any remodel. It's something you should do to maintain your system every few months anyway, so you might as well do it after a remodel. Number six is to create single entry and exit points for your work area. There is no faster way to have dust travel throughout your house than to have a bunch of places where you or your crew can go in and out of your project area. Limit it to one doorway or entry point and thoroughly seal all the other access points. Use the windows as places to remove materials if you can so you don't have to go in and out a lot. At your access point, install a solid dust containment door kit with a zipper like this Easy Up dust containment door kit from Trimaco. Make sure you keep it closed up at all times. Even leaving it open for just a few minutes while creating a lot of dust can be enough to have it flow into the rest of your house and make a mess. If you have help on your project, make sure your crew is as diligent about containing the dust as you are. Number seven is to protect your floors. Taking a little bit of time up front to protect your floors both inside and outside your project area can save you a huge headache down the road. Create singular pathways to and from your project site and to the restroom you're using throughout the project to protect your floors and make sure you and your crew are using only those pathways. When it comes to carpeting, you may not realize how dirty it has become because your carpet will suck up the job site dust. If you have kids or pets crawling around on it, it can be dangerous. Protect it with some cling wrap like the Easy Mask Protective Carpet Film. 
It's easy to install and keeps your carpet protected from tracking and absorbing dust. Keeping the dust off of harder surface floors like hardwoods, linoleum, or tile is pretty simple by using some thick cardboard floor protectant like Trimaco's X-Board. It'll keep your floors from getting dirty, scratched, or damaged, and your boots from tracking dust through other areas of your house. Number eight might seem a little counterintuitive, but I encourage you to keep your boots on. One of the biggest culprits of spreading dust is the bottoms of your boots or shoes. And it just doesn't make a lot of sense to try and take them on and off as you go in and out of your work area all day. It might work for the first few hours, but eventually you'll get sick of taking your shoes off and on. Utilize shoe guards as much as possible, or if you want to splurge and try out an awesome new product, check out the Easy Guard Floor System from Trimaco. This thing allows you to step in, slide back, and tear off a sticky protective plastic membrane for the bottom of your boots. Think of it like a box of cling wrap in your kitchen. It's super easy to use and you can just stash it next to your door to make sure you can always walk through the house without fear of tracking dust. The dust is trapped to the bottom of your shoes by the plastic wrap, so you have nice clean feet when going through the house. Number nine is take your cuts outside as much as possible. Many people think that dust containment stops with the demo portion of the remodel, so they take down any dust containment they've put up and throw it away. But few things generate more dust than cutting and sanding drywall. Keep your dust containment up for the duration of the project or be prepared to rehang it once you get to drywall. I recommend doing as much of the cutting of your drywall and building materials outside and then bringing the pieces in and hanging them. Keep as much dust outside initially as you possibly can. And lastly, I encourage you to keep a shop vac handy at all times. Drywall dust is prolific and one of the reasons why I absolutely despise doing drywall. I recommend doing everything you can to minimize your dust while you're sanding it. The pros don't generate a lot of dust doing drywall, but if you're an amateur like me, consider investing in a drywall sanding dust attachment for your shop vac. Keep that shop vac on hand and suck up any dust that starts to accumulate throughout the project at least at the end of every workday. You'll be extremely glad that you did. And of course, if you're generating a lot of dust, make sure that you wear a respirator or a dust mask to protect yourself. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and hopefully it gave you some ideas on how to keep your house dust free for your upcoming or existing remodeling projects. I wanna say a quick thank you to Trimaco for supplying many of the products shown in this video. And if you'd like to see their full line of products, I encourage you to visit their website at trimaco.com. And as always, if you wanna check out more of my DIY or home improvement related projects, visit my website at mrfixitdiy.com. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.